Look at this ball. It has like a lighter side and a darker side. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Can everybody see that? Um, and this is kind of, I thought it was, it was just a great way to kind of show um, what he was talking about in the book about, about money. About how um, it's both good and evil. Kind of like, a, kind of like right. the idea of a yin-yang, mm, yin-yang kind of. Yeah. Um, which, it has some interesting points to it. I mean, we could say the same thing with, you know, sex. It has a good side and a bad side to it, you know. Right. Um, or power, or good side or bad side. Everything, anything. And, uh, and, and it seems real, real, um, real easy like that. Um, and then this one would kind of visualize my, um, my understanding of money. That it's just kind of there, and it's greed that's the issue. It's the person's heart that's the issue. Um, so really just to kind of visualize. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm purposely leaving it vague for you guys to come to your own conclusions about um, kind of, I don't want to, I teach you things that are, that are true and not true according to, you know, the cults and the Bible and stuff like that, right. but this isn't really something that I can answer for you, you know what I mean? It has to be something that you, ha- you read the Bible yourself, you see what I've talked about, and you just kind of come to your own conclusions according to what you think best fits, scri- fits scripture. Okay, um... So whichever, whichever understanding you take, you, we, we talked about this last week, you can't see money as objective. Right. You have to see it as a force to be reckoned with, regardless of whether you think it, it in of itself is a power or whether you just see that the heart is the problem. Either way, you can't see money as objective. Because once money enters into your life, it changes the way you think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, a, a character on a, on, a, on a TV sitcom made this comment. Money doesn't change who you are, it just amplifies the stuff that's already there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I agree with uh, that, but it is definitely something worth thinking about. Ca- Richard Castle says it on the show Castle. Right. Um, and, I mean, that, that is worth some, worth the yes. thought, you know? It might be half way yeah. true. Because, like, you see some people who are kind of like, you know, whatever, and then they get money and they start acting kind of like a jerk. But maybe that was there the whole time and it just didn't have a opportunity to surface and then you see some tell. people who are foolish and, 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 and waste their money and then like they've been lottery or whatever and they act Thanks. foolish like they always have so it's like well I don't know money definitely does give rise to, to the feeling of I'm my own boss yeah or grandpa whichever or um and uh, we can de- we can we can also uh, come to the same conclusion no matter which stance you take that money is strongly warned against Okay. But then, one of the things that I only briefly glanced on last week, and I want to kind of look at it a little bit more. In the Old Testament, money was a sign of God's blessing a lot of times. Like, when it says that God was going to bless Abraham, money was one of the necessity things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where he increased greatly in wealth. And he increased so much that, like, the, the neighboring kings around him were even paying attention to him. You know what I mean? And then that's kind of the same thing that happens throughout the line of Abraham. We see Isaac also increased with wealth to the point that the, that the area of where the Philistines would later inhabit, they're also kind of, you know, standoffish with him about it. And uh, he has the tits with the wells and all these different things that happen from his wealth. And then um, Abraham, Isaac, jo- uh, Joseph, um, sorry, Jacob, uh, it also mentions about he how he increased in wealth, and then uh, his son Joseph goes to Egypt, and he increases in wealth. And so you see all throughout the line of what would become Israel, that's the sign of God's blessing is is the is the financial prosperity, and it seems to go on like that throughout Israelite history until we reach the days of about King Ahab, King Omri, where Israel as a nation is prospering economically, and yet the only thing that the Bible talks about is how immoral they were. So we kind of start to see a, a, a change between now what? And then we see Job who has everything and then everything is taken from him. So, I mean, so we have a lot of different conflicting ideas that are, that are or so, it's seemingly con, uh, conflicting ideas. But that is definitely something that we, that we need to realize is the Old Testament did talk about money as, 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 a, as, a, as a positive thing, as a blessing, um, as a sign of God's blessing to these people. But so I think as time went on, it slowly turn around. Like or it start mean? becoming immoral and all these other, you know, 
The money or the, the just the, the hearts of the the people. Oh, started, okay. In time, you know, it started out as a blessing, and slowly in, in time. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, well, that's not really what I was talking no. about. I was uh, that's a good point, but I was more talking about the way that um, in the earlier days of like the the found, the, the the forefathers of Israel, uh, money was 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 you know God's like okay, I'm blessing you, and this is a sign of your of, of the blessing. Right. But then as history kind of progresses, God doesn't so much say that uh-uh. you know necessarily in, in different in different things. You know, like I remember in one of the prophets, he he's even saying you know hey you have this wealth and you think that it's you know your ta- your your strength and it's not, and ruin is coming upon you. You need to turn from your sins. Right. Yeah, so it just yeah. definitely something worth thinking about. Um, so we're going to look at just a few passages. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 through 3. And it says, And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their means. Um, so here we have women um, who are kind of following Jesus' ministry right. and uh, giving financial support through it. And then in Romans 12, uh, 8... Um, the one who exhorts in his ex- exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Um, so obviously here again we have money mentioned um, in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, way of being generous. It doesn't say a specific dollar amount. It just says generosity. Like when Jesus is standing at the temple, or actually he's sitting and watching people give money, and he, he notices the, the, the poor woman who gives in you know her, her little bit, and he says, Wow, this woman gave more than all those rich people who were giving in all, all huge sums. Well, why? Because she gave generously, and they gave, you know, not out of the, not out of their abundance. They they set up this this specific thing, and she didn't have that much, and she still gave. Right. So, um, and we also see um, with all of this, you know, the main idea that I that I want to get out of all of this is that we see money definitely used for for good things. And we see it as a, as a sign of, of God's blessing in some parts of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, but then um, this kind of changes gears a little bit. No matter what the economic status of a person, it's important to note that Matthew ten and the rest of the Bible too talks about wealth without us putting our trust in the wealth. Right. In 10, verse 30 through 31, it says, um, But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. See, see what he's saying there? That God's, God sees your needs. God cares for you. See what I mean? And he talks about, about God providing for, for, uh, for things for you, so not, not to worry about stuff. Right. But he doesn't really get into money here. See what I mean? I, I, I was talking one time about this, you know, where, where we pray stuff like this. Okay, God, I pray that you, you give us the money so we can make the rent so that we don't lose the house. Well, so our, our, our trust is in, is in the house. So in, in the yeah. rent money and in the house. Yeah. Well, you have to be okay with, with losing the house. You know what I mean? Like, the, your, your goal is not set on the rent money. Your goal is seeking God right. and trusting in God to provide for the for the things that you need in the future. Okay. See what I mean? Where if you lose the house, I mean that's regrettable. That, that that's a bad that, that's a terrible thing. I, I would hate for that to happen to any of you guys. But right. our trust is not set on the house or on our ability to pay for the house. Right. See what I mean? Um, so with that being said, um, it, the Bible does talk about uh, about. Um, trusting in God regardless of the money and what people try to do is they try to get money so that they don't have to worry about um, you know having rent money and stuff oh if I just had more money well 
the idea should be this. Yes, I'm not. Ta- I'm not saying you shouldn't work hard. I'm not saying you shouldn't be wise with your money. I'm not talking about that. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, regardless of whether you have a lot or a little, you should be trusting in God for, for your life as the provider, not in the money as your provider. See you know what I mean? And so I think that's one thing to keep in mind with money is that is money kind of a necessity in this culture? Yeah, you really can't get by without money in this culture. Right. Like it's just not going to happen. If you don't have money, you're not going to have a good credit score. And if you don't have a good credit score, you're not going to actually be taken seriously anywhere. You're not going to get a good job. You're not going to get a good rent, rent, a place to rent or buy. Uh, you're not going to get a good uh, amount, a good percentage on your, on a car loan or anything. It's just it's just unrealistic to imagine life without any money in America. I mean, it's possible. It's just not very realistic. Um, yeah, but does that does that kind of make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So wealth in no way contributes to our happiness in life. Oftentimes we think if I had more money, I'd be more happy. Right. But the truth is, if you had more money, you might be more distracted. I've got uh-huh. a dog here in my nose and I can't get it out. <laughs> it's terrible, guys. It's so terrible. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways. Um, and then people who have money still aren't happy, so they try to pursue more things. You know what I mean? And, and, and the truth is, we're not going to find our happiness in the things. Ecclesiastes no. talks to us in great lengths. It goes through every single thing in Ecclesiastes that people try to find fulfillment in. Your work, just partying, huh. uh, being wise and, and living living prudently, uh, you know, it goes through all these different things and it's, it, it comes to this conclusion that there, there's no reason for that. A, without God there's no reason to live by any moral code. And B, there's not going to be any fulfillment through it anyways. Because we only find our fulfillment in life with God. So with that being said, it really doesn't matter if we have much or if we have little. What matters is that we do what we can with what we have. Right. See what I mean? Um, so, wealth in no way contributes to happiness, and God God is the one who takes care of us, not money. Our, our hope is supposed to be set on money, regardless of the good things and the bad things with uh, money itself. Um, so what boundaries exist for wealth that you guys can think of? What? Yeah, what? I'm a little confused. Like, um, <clears throat> does the Bible give any guidelines as to mm. how to and to not use your money if you have it? Uh. Or view your money. Use or view. Mm. Well, you're supposed to help the widows and the orphans. That doesn't sound like it came from God. Mm-hmm. God helps those who help themselves. It's in there somewhere. Mm. It's supposed to help the poor. Um. Good answers. Not foolishly. Elaborate. Like, um, like the prodigal son who went out and wasted all his money on whores and whatnot. Jesus told that story. That means we should act like him, right? Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh-huh. I think the um, the story Jesus told about the uh, talents, or not talents, you know, the one where he gave so much to each servant. and one Yeah, talents. Yeah. I, I, I know that's more talking about like gifts and such, but um I think it has to do with money as well. No, it has to do with money. Yeah. Oh. What you heard is you heard a youth pastor probably <laughs> talk about it being skills. <laughs> Just kidding. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is it is money. No, <laughs> Good answers. Anyone? Um, I'm tr- I'm trying to think. Okay. Um, like the guy who, like just just storing it up for yourself, like the guy who built the barns for himself. Yeah, we talked looked at him last week. Yeah. Good example. Mm, pay our taxes. To the government. <laughs> we uh, we give to what Caesar? <laughs> we we give. What if we don't agree Caesar. with everything that they're doing? We're still supposed to. But that justifies my 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 <laughs> cheating on the on the IRS reports. Check me up on this, Ben. Come on. <laughs> Barnabas would have. 
<laughs> just kidding. <laughs> wow. That's why he gave all his, all his possession or his household or whatever you gave away. Because he just didn't want to pay taxes on it. He's like, yeah, what now? Your move, government. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm back on topic. Any other uh, answers? Oh, and tithes. We didn't do the church. Okay. Like offerings and stuff. Just, well, not just tithes, but, you know, offerings to help church and pastors and missionaries and stuff. Any more ideas? No? I'm going to move on. You need to raise your hand if you're going to, if you still need time to think. Be quick. Be quick. Oh, my finger's on it. First off, um, and I think, um, yeah. let me just, before we go on here, I'm not going to say you guys' answers were wrong because they're not <laughs> worded in the same Jeez. way that mine are. But, I mean, a lot of you guys' answers had to do with the things that, that, that I'm going to say here. Okay, right. so. First uh, thing, the, the boundary that exists with wealth, wealth is that you, you understand that God is the owner. Right. See, what people miss about the tithe of the Old Testament yeah. was it wasn't, okay, it wasn't like this. I'm giving my 10% so that I get to do whatever I want with the rest. The tithe was a declaration that you were committing the whole to God uh-huh. by giving a portion of it. Paul talks about this. Uh, okay. The lump becomes pure by offering just a little bit of it. Uh, See what I mean? So by the tithe, it was a way of showing that God, every th- I'm dedicating everything that I have to you, but God only required a tenth as a, as a show of this. Uh, so then how does that relate to today? Well, people then say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the 10% and the, 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 the tithe principle, and I'm going to pay my tithe, and that's all that I owe to the church. It's like, okay, you're kind of putting a, an unrealistic uh, split yeah. between the church and yeah. you. Uh-huh. Remember, who is the church? Us. Uh, it's yeah. not a building, right? Right. So it's not like we go and give our give our taxes to the government, right? <laughs> right. We are the church, and we yeah. want to do ministries, right? Right. And the Bible tells us to provide for ministers, right? Right. See what I mean? Yeah. In fact, there's one part where Paul's, where Paul's talking about providing for, for the ministers, and he doesn't say anything about 10%. He gives. To, he talks about giving abundantly. <laughs> so, with that being said, right. just throwing that out there. Um, and Paul, the pastor actually talked about this a couple weeks ago. He said, yeah. um, in the in the Old Testament they said ten percent. In the old, in the New Testament they said give it all. <laughs> so, you know, hey, there's that. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and so, what really what people try to do is they try to do the exact same thing that they misunderstand from the Old Testament. The Old Testament doesn't say give your ten percent and then the rest is yours to squander. Right. It says this is how you how what you're supposed to do. This is how you should break it up. See what I mean? It, it goes into great detail about this. Right. Uh, twenty five and twenty three. And what what started um, me going me um, studying the tithe was I had a friend on Facebook, excuse me, who was talking about the way that that giving money in a tithe to the church was uh, was a um, a creation excuse me of the medieval church, and that in the Old Testament God required the um, the grains and that kind of stuff, but he didn't require money. And at the foundation of his argument was a misunderstanding of the tithe. See, back then, they didn't deal with money as much as we do. Well, right. our culture has completely changed gears. Now we deal with money more than anything else. Uh-huh. So to then equate for us to live in the same center that they did 1400 BC is a little bit of a leap. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that that's a little bit unfair historically. Right. Um, so then the next thing is that, once again, the tithe, well, let's just get into it. Well, the video is 25, 23. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. Uh-huh. Recap. Who owned the land? God. Okay. This is just one verse that, that I've We're chosen to just, pick out. Right. They're just temporarily. Right. This is one of the verses that, that I've chosen to pick out. There's much, much more that we could get into <laughs> about how, the, how the, the produce of the land is God's, about all these different things. He says it repeatedly. This is mine. We have this kid's book for Micah. It's called the Minosaurus. Uh-huh. Mine. <laughs> That's simple. And people kind of get a misunderstanding. They kind of get this idea of that, that it's, God's out there somewhere. Yeah. And this is my wealth, and so I'm being generous by giving my 10% to the church. Well, once again, uh, you can't put a division between your finances and the church. All right. You are the church. All of your money is God's money, and you have to 
ten percent is a good starting place, but you should always be looking for how you can give more, not just money. Get past money. How you can give more of yourself, right. your time, time and your resources. Yeah. See what I mean? There's some people who have helped the church in ways that we couldn't have gotten anywhere else because they had the resources to do so. Mm-hmm. Pastor, for instance, has a background in construction, a very long background in construction. Mm-hmm. So his resource to the church wasn't it was financial at one time. And it is kind of now, too. That's off topic, though. Uh, but it, His main resource now has been his knowledge and saving us thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. By doing for, right, so that the church can be more um, uh, more impactful. Can you see this red spot on my knee? It's real itchy, bud. <laughs> God, yeah, I can't even think with this thing. Do you want me to cut it off? I think I you do. <laughs> like, goodness you need sakes. to amputate that leg. I'm getting so agitated, and I'm trying to keep my calm during the lesson, but it's really bothering me. Uh, or what are we talking about? Find some... Uh, Sandpaper? Well, What's that, or put some... Some, uh, but what were we talking about? Giving you resources. Yeah, yes. Resources. So giving you resources past money. But the problem is that in America, money has such a money and material possessions have such a death grip on us mm-hmm. that we can't get past money. Right. We can't do it. We, we it's not that we, we even try. We just don't see the need to. You know. Hey, I've given my ten percent, so that means that God leave me alone for the rest of this. You know. And so mm-hmm. then we get the idea of stuff like retiring and stuff. That God, I, I, I worked my job, so now that I'm older, I get to sit around and do nothing all day. See, I mean, like, that's just not biblical. God has a plan and a purpose for our life from the moment that we start breathing to the moment that we stop breathing. And you'll know that God no longer has a plan for your life when you are dead. See, I mean, it's that simple. Right. Um, even people, I know this is a hard thing to hear, but even people who are on their deathbed, God still has a plan for them, too. Uh-huh. See, I mean... In every, in every breath that you have in, in your body, it, it, live it like Paul said. You know, I, I've given it like, like a drink offering. I'm being poured out. I've ran the good race. I'm continuing to run it. I know that the end is approaching, but I'm still running it strong. See what I mean? No. Anyways, first thing there, God is the owner. Second, those um, who are able are obligated to care for others. In other words... God gives to you, not so that you can squander, but God gives to you so that you can utilize that wisely. Hmm. I believe Chuck already said something about not using it foolishly. Mm-hmm. And Pastor talked about this too. He said about how the church uh, has been looks for good deals and whatnot. Like, I'll give you right. an example. The church pays for the guitar strings. Right. Okay? Now, um, we could have gone down to, what was that place called? TNT. TNT, TNT Music. Yeah. And gotten one package of guitar strings. One package of the lower quality right. for about ten dollars for one package. Right. That's on a good day. Yeah. Not including tax. We get uh, online for a three pack for the same price, uh-huh. with no tax. Uh huh. See what I mean? Like that. That's a. Yeah. That's a. That's a huge difference. See what I mean? Like we f- we are we do find good deals, but it's not because the church is over there and we're over here. It's because uh-huh. we are the church, and we know that if we spend too much money wasteful here. We won't be able to do the outreaches that we do, like, oh, I don't know, the Harvest Fest is coming up. Right, right. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. We only have, like, Pastor's talking about this. If you have $1 and you spend $2, you now negative $1. You're not going to. So if we, if we only have limited resources, we use it wisely. Mm-hmm. Um, those who, are, who have are obligated to care for, for those who do not. Deuteronomy 14, 28 through 29. At the end of every three years, you shall bring out all the tithe of your produce in the same year and lay it up within your towns. And the Levite, because he has no portion or inheritance with, with you, and the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, who are within your town, shall come and, eat and be filled, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work, of, work uh, of your hands that you do. They also had another rule, where if you were gleaning the fields, anything that fell over excess, you couldn't pick it up. You had to leave it there for poor people, like in the story of Ruth. Right. Um, they also had another one, where if a woman died with, I mean, sorry, if a woman's husband died and she was still childless, um, it was up to the next nearest relative to take to take her up in marriage, so that she could be provided, so that she could provide an heir to the yeah. family name, so that she could provi- provide it for. Her. Right. See what I mean? They had these different things, all these old things in place, so that all the law can be sum- uh, summarized in two statements: love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So I mean, everything revolved around that. Um, so, um, if you have, you are in the, in the in the place of being obligated to care for others. Um, 
And this is very, very good news for us because there's no longer a place for anxiety in our life and there's no longer a place for tyranny in our lives with belongings. I'm not saying we're Christians, we should never struggle with that, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, but now that we know this, we're no longer bound by the, that anxiety with worry and it was anxiety with money because it's not ours. God gives and he takes away. Uh-huh. See what I mean? He, he gives it to you, you do the best job that you can with it, but he might take it away in the future. Problem solved. It's not. It's not our problem. See what right. I mean? It's God's problem. Uh-huh. God gives the money. He expects us to handle it well. But remember, once it's gone, it's gone. Right? So, and then uh, there also uh, freezes of tyranny over it. I choose where all my money is. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. It's it's God's money. See what I mean? It just freezes of all that of all that stress. I know that sounds like it would make us more stressed because our th- our money isn't really our own. But actually, if you think about it, that means less stress. Uh-huh. See what I mean? Um, okay, um, John, John Wesley, there was a story of John Wesley that was told that, I don't know if it's true or not, um, but his house burned down, uh, and when they came and told him, John, your house is on fire, or Reverend Re- Wesley or whatever, and he said, the Lord's house burned, one less responsibility for me. And I, why I included this story, it doesn't matter if it's real or not, because I wanted to kind of emphasize what I'm talking about here. Yeah. It's the Lord's, see what I mean? And once it's, you free yourself of that, eh, see what I mean? You don't have to worry about it. We, what the world teaches us is that we have to squander and we have to squander and we have to like, you know, worry and fret about every little penny and we've uh-huh. got to always be on the guard because it is, we don't have to do that. Uh-huh. We should keep, we should keep good, good guard of it and everything. But remember, it's not ours. Right. And that should kind of be the same for everything that that, that you dedicate to the Lord. You know what I mean? We're gonna actually talk about this on Sunday night. Uh-huh. Um, we're gonna talk about Leviticus one verses like two through three or whatever. But the idea of freeing yourself from worry by dedicating it to God. Um, so, it's not how much should I give, but how much should I keep. Mm. See, we, we've gotten it backwards in America because Americans mm. are so preoccupied with money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if we are just trustees over something, it's not how much should I should I give because it's not my money. It's God's money, so it's how much should I keep. Right. Well, let's weigh th- some things out here. How much does your family need to survive on? See what I mean? Right. Start. <laughs> how much does food cost? Uh-huh. Well, okay, that's how much you should keep. See what I mean? And we can we can weigh that according to what God has placed us in. Uh-huh. So then what some people do is they guilt trip themselves. I'm in a place of having a lot, and a lot of persons in a place of having a little bit. We were never tasked with, with being guilt tripped. If you have, well, remember I, I, we were talking about last week. Be realistic. Face face your money. If you don't face it, you're not going to overcome it. Right. You have to be real with your with your money. I have. Uh-huh. That's just a fact. Now you have an obligation to help others, yes, but not out of guilt, out of joy. Right. See what I mean? So, um, temporary stewards, we're just doing the best that we can. Mm-hmm. Any questions on that? Once you get rid of the idea of mine, 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 you know, ownership, once you get rid of that idea, it's a whole lot easier. You're not going to be offended with things that change at the church building. You're not going to be offended when, when the pastor uses money in a way that, that you're not, you're not what you wasn't your idea. Right. I mean, I, I'm not talking about where spending in a church is unprotected. Like, and an elder or a pastor or whoever can just randomly take money out of the account. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> right. That's immoral. I'm not talking about leadership acting in an immoral fashion either. Uh-huh. No. Leadership is in, is, is in a place of, of having to do right and wrong the same as we are. Okay. However, with that being said, once you free up the ownership, oh, well, they bought new chairs. I wouldn't have done that. I would have spent it over here. doesn't matter. See what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying that I was against the purchase of the chairs. <laughs> I'm just trying to give an example, okay? <laughs> just trying to give an example. So, okay. So then some people kind of come to the conclusion that all that matters is my heart, which is true and not true at the same time. It's a very complicated issue. Well, let's try and look at it little bit by little bit. Isaiah 58, uh, 6-7 Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, 
uh, when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. And then 10, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. Well, I was doing this fast from my heart. Well, once again, though, yes and no. No in the sense of just because you meant well doesn't mean that it was well. All right. But yes in the sense of if you're truly seeking after the Lord, one of the ways that that's exemplified is in the way that we treat others. Uh -huh. What they were trying to do is they were trying to squander their wealth while getting uh -huh. blessings from God. Yeah. So they were using yeah. fasting to manipulate people and God. Nah. Well, that's not really how it works. Uh -huh. See what I mean? So, yes, in a way, all that matters is your heart. But also, no, because Isaiah didn't say your heart was evil. He said your actions were evil. But that kind of shows where the heart's at. Uh -huh. But sometimes our heart is hidden even from us. Right. Sometimes we genuinely think that we're doing something good, well, and we're not. Actually, yeah. I knew somebody who bought their kid a Ouija board, and they thought it was fine. They were ignorant of the fact. Yeah. So one, one set says, hey, all that matters was their heart, right? Well, no, it was still a bad thing, and it caused bad things to happen afterwards, right? Uh -huh. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, um, selfishness is not to establish it. We already looked at that before. So in a way, all that matters is your heart, but remember, your actions need to be a continuity of what's in your heart. Um, so service and giving revives our spiritual lives. Um, we become spiritually dead, in a way, by not giving, by not serving others. Uh, inside we become kind of uh, stiff, um, immovable. And giving and, and serving others has a way of loosening us. You know, it has a way of freeing us up spiritually. It has a way of helping us to grasp more of God and, and to understand more of God and to seek more of God. Um, it has an interesting hold on our life. Um, sometimes, <laughs> man. Dogs... I don't know what she ate, man, but I'm smelling it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is terrible. That is so terrible. Between me and Ben up on the arm of the couch. We did them outside. <laughs> What's bad is when you actually hear it. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, it's coming. <laughs> um, okay. Um. So also, along with giving and, 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 and serving others, that, that idea of you know, giving it up and, and handling it well according to what God has, is the idea of um, persistency mm -hmm. in giving. So what we do is, oh, I tried tithes. I tried that yes, ministry. Lord, I, I tried, tried that. that. See, and it kind of gives this idea of not just I'm looking for a blessing, not just that. It also gives this idea of I wasn't changed, and it didn't bring me the happiness that I was looking for, and so I need to try something else. Mm. And so to that, it's persistency in doing the good changes right. us. Not just doing the good, but persistency in that. Um, consecrating possessions consecrates ourselves. If you want your life to be consecrated to the Lord, consecrate your things. It's been said that um, we talked about this last week, um, the, the conversions of the heart and the mind and the Purse. See what I mean? No, purse. Purple. Money. Oh, purse. yeah, yeah. Um, the idea of um, if you really want want God to use you, surrender your things. Uh. See what I mean? The idea of um, you can tell when God has a, has a hold of the heart is when, they, when he has a, a hold of their money. See what I mean? That kind of an idea. Because in America, everything is so materialistic. Uh -huh. um, so giving money gives up security. Remember what we were talking about last week? Money equals security. Right. right. So giving it up is giving up security. But the less you give, the more you fear. How does that make sense? I don't know. The more security you have in wealth, the more fear you have. The more you give, you give that security away, the, the less fear you'll have. What people try to do is they try to hoard their belongings, hoard right. their money, hoard their time, hoard, hoard, hoard. Use it for every second, squilge every little bit that, the, bit that they can for themselves. And then with that comes fear. Uh -huh. Yeah, with, with people with shoulder. panic attacks and anxieties and those kinds yeah. of things, oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes there'll be wrong thinking involved somewhere. And in fact, um, I was talking with someone this past week or two, and... 
the counselor actually told them this. We cannot make any progress progress through, with your physical problems until your mental problems change. Mm. Uh-huh. So you need to get serious and start addressing these things. Your First. thinking, you need to start addressing that, and then we'll we'll be able to work on your physical problems. Right. See, he, he was he was um, gaining physical ailments because his thinking was wrong. Right. See, I mean, our minds have really strong grips over our bodies and our spirits uh-huh. and so we can't allow these stupid things to be going through our heads all day and expect to be well it's just not going to happen yeah. all right so um the paradox of money giving gives security but the less you give the more you fear um and then giving frees us there's a certain kind of bondage that comes with not being a giving person there's uh-huh. just a certain bondage that comes with that. All right. Um, yeah, so if I had any any uh, points, it would be... Uh, let me double check something real quick. If I had any helping points here, um, I would definitely, definitely, definitely advise you guys um, to give as much as you can. As often as you can. You'll be doing yourself a favor... And uh, you'll you will feel better after the fact, but that's not really the main point. Mm-hmm. Um, so then comes the idea of: Is your money controlling you? Are your things controlling you, or are you using them? And this is something you can't really just answer yes or no. This is something you actually have to stop and think about: right. Is it controlling me, or am I using it? Just stop and think about that. Does your world revolve around your things? Does your money go most into your things? Does your money is your money used most for yourself? These are genuine questions to ask yourself. I'm not trying to judge you guys. I'm trying to help you guys critically analyze your own life. Because what's going to happen is if you continue to, to, to hold on to your things, you will not be satisfied. In fact, you'll fall into places like depression. You'll fall into places like um, the panics and stuff like that because that's what goes along with that using something on the other hand is seeing it, it, its potential and taking advantage of it so um, so money is a rival God for us but God uses it to teach us to trust him for our daily bread kind of a little bit odd how that works but <laughs> God does teach us to uh, to trust in him through it mm-hmm. So God desires good management. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Where are you? Verse 50. There it is. Uh, Nicodemus, who had gone to him before and um, and who was one of them, said to them, so I don't really want to get into what he said, but here we have Nicodemus, this Pharisee, who's using his, his influence to change the outcome of something. Oh. See what I mean? This is actually kind of a significant thing. And then he goes on in verse 51, Does our law j- uh, judge a man without first uh, giving him a hearing and learning what he does? See, but he, my, my main point being, Nicodemus, who had the ability to influence, used that. Mm-hmm. See, when your when your position you, um, uh, controls you, that's where your you make decisions based off of what's expected of that role. But when you are using a role, you say, "How can I glorify God in the midst of this?" See, what we do is we allow our money to make the decision for our future, mm-hmm. for our lives, it has nothing to do with God. Right. Now it is true that God will 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 um, will show us His calling according to um, will show us His calling according to uh, um, providing money and that kind of stuff. That is true, but sometimes you know that 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 will be something where He'll provide for us in the midst of it. Um, and then not in chapter nineteen, verse thirty-nine, the same book.
Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. This is talking about Jesus' burial. Once again, we have Nicodemus using his, his wealth to bring blessings. So uh, Nicodemus is the guy in John chapter 3 that goes to Jesus in the night to talk to him and ask him the questions. Uh, you know, for God so loved the world, that was when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Um, Matthew 25. Oops, going the wrong way. Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30. I'm not going to read the whole thing. For, it'll t- um, for it will be like a man going on a journey. He called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another, um, to another one, uh, to each according to his ability. So then he, so he gives it to these two people, and then on down the road, each of them invested differently, and they each, um, you know, do 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 well except for this this one guy who takes it, um, what he's been given, and he buries it so that nothing will happen to it. And then he makes this comment, um, Master, in verse twenty four, Master, I knew you had to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seeds. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. Now keep in mind, he didn't lose the thing. He simply did nothing with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Remember that. Um, you, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was uh, my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. Now, just so that we're all on the same basis here, <coughs> um, interest back then was pretty much how it is now. Mm. Barely even worth the, the the barely even worth what it was. Mm. I mean, the inflation rate is higher than 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 our interest rates are in our, in our modern day banks. Wow. So yeah. you really interest does less than nothing. I mean, but and it was the same, kind of the same thing going on here. So what he's saying is literally, the bare minimum. I mean, interest would not have gotten him that much more. See what I mean? Um, so basically, what this, what this, what this steward, what this servant did was was foolish and stupid, basically. Uh, for whoever who, who has, uh, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents, not the one who had the five. Okay, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, and that place there will be uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, so that this idea that God desires good management, God desires. Uh, was uh, Chuck just mentioned this? I don't really ask him about that. Um, not all are called to not have wealth. Some people have have the conclusion, oh, give up all that I have. That's a good idea, right? And eh, not necessarily, because if you give up all that you have, you won't have the resources <laughs> to give any more. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I quit my job for the Lord. Well, that's good, except now you don't have any income to then give yeah. more. Yeah. So yes, in Acts we have some people are called to give, but not all people are called to give. Right. See what I mean? And in fact, some people tried to fake it by the fact that they weren't tried and called to give, but they were wanting the same prestige from it. Well, and nice and sapphire. Yeah. And told them that they didn't have to right. give at all. I mean, exactly, yeah. Like, it wasn't like they were making them right, everything right. And give everything. Yeah, he says, when it, was your, when it was yours, could you not have decided where your money went? You know what I mean? So what they did is they saw Barnabas, and Barnabas felt like he should do this. So he did it. And then he got, it just so happened that he got a good name for himself and they actually named him Barnabas from it. Right. So they're like, hey, this looks like a good idea. Let's do that. But instead of actually doing it, which remember, just like Chuck mentioned, they, they weren't called to do that. They wanted the prestige from it. So uh-huh. they sold it and then said, oh yeah, this is all of it, but it really wasn't all of it. So not all are called to not have wealth. It's, we're going to look at this later with, with marriage, but not all are called to be married. Not all are called to be in relationships. Um, not all, all are called to be in places of power or, pos- or position. To each are, uh, person is called a different thing. Um, and also there's the idea that prof- professions need Christians. Well, we need to see more Christians running for running for Senate, running for uh, presidency, running for, you know, different things like that, running businesses. We need to see more Christians, you know, uh, working in CYFD or CPS. We need to see more Christians working in, you know, in the, in the, in the social world. We need to see more of that. You know, people think that for whatever reason, to be called, you know, as a Christian means to go into minister, ministry as a pastor. Well, that's not necessarily what we're all called to do. See what I mean? Like, that's just not realistic with the facts at hand. 
Um, professions need Christians, and, and not all Christians are called uh, into the same area. So, but in doing, do with purpose and discipline. If you just enter into the business world with no purpose and discipline, you will be there for your own profit. But this is exactly what we've been talking about. You have to, you have, you have to have a purpose and a plan for it. Um, and God obviously has to be the center. And we're also just turn into, once again, it's going to be controlling you. Um, so have something without it having you. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. And you know when something has you by the fact of how you react to it, how your heart is set towards it. Um, would it literally be the end of your life if you were to lose it? See what I mean? uh, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. Okay, so I know how to have little, and I know how to have much. I know how to be rich and poor, basically. And any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things to him who strengthens me. See, whatever area we are in life, we need God's grace to carry us through it. Did you get that? If you are rich, you need God's grace as much to, to help you not be given to it as much as if you are poor, you need God's grace to not be seeking. See what I mean? Either way, rich and poor, they both give their hearts over to something. Uh -huh. See what I mean? And that's exactly what Paul is just saying. I have found the secret to this, that God can strengthen me. His grace will carry me. It will be sufficient enough. And regardless of whether I'm rich or poor, it will sustain me through this course of life. See what I mean? And what people fail to realize is that it takes grace to be rich. It really does. Because wealth has a way of, once again, when when we have something, we just have a way of kind of turning psycho about it. Huh. You know? Um, anyways. So, practicing the light side of money in closing here. That's right, I said in closing. Um, just uh, a few quick things, five really quick things. First, be thankful for what you have and what you enjoy. Not just what you have, but the things that you get to enjoy. Sleep. I know, I know a lot of people who have insomnia and can't sleep. You know what I mean? And every second you get of sleep, I mean, just enjoy that. I'm not saying feel guilty about it, but be thankful about it. You know what I mean? If you have a car, instead of having to walk to work, well, that's a great thing. Enjoy it. Be, be thankful. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, phones. Not everybody has a phone. Not everybody can afford a phone. You know, once again, be thankful for the things that you have. Uh, second, receive, use, and let it go. This is a lifelong practice that you will have to use throughout the course of your life. When it's, when, when it's a status or a position, receive it with grace, use it for its purpose, and then let it go when it's time to let it go. You know what I mean? Um, money. Receive it when, when God gives it to you. Use it as best as you can as in the way that God, you feel like God uh, wants you to, and then let it go when it's time to let it go. Um, relationships, once again, receive them, use them, let them go. I'm not saying use your partner, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> but if you have certain people in your life, like parents, for instance, receive that, grow from it, you know what I mean? Um, use it to its, to its intended outcome. Bless them, they bless you. See what I mean? Um, and then... When there, there will be a time when, when your parents or whoever that relationship is, they will die. And, it's, and you have to release them with grace. You have to let go. So, I mean, God has chosen to allow that person to die, regardless of whether he directly caused it or simply allowed it to. It doesn't even matter. He allowed them to pass from this world, and we all have limited times in this world. So once that, once that time has come, let them go. So, I mean, it's a process in life. And then God will bring other people into our lives. It's not like God will always take and always take and always take. He gives and He takes. So you have to learn to receive the things that He gives, use them while you have them, and then let them go. See what I mean? Um, so. Um, third thing. This was an idea that He had. Um, I, I thought it was good enough. Um, next time you get paid, cash the check. He, he advised in dollar bills. That's a lot of dollar bills, but okay. Just bear <laughs> with me. And then separate it out before you on the carpet where you can actually see it. And then visually take 10% of that. And so that way you kind of get the idea of it. Because you have to remember, the Israelites, when they were dividing up their grain, they literally had it all before them yeah. as they were dividing it up. 
And so when they took it into the into into give their tithe, they were able to see that. You know what I mean? And so he, he advises for the purpose of seeing it, being appreciative of it, and giving it away. Not so you can roll around in it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, Gosh. Shoot. Um, number four, dedicate your profession the same as a pastor. If you are a Christian, that's where God ha- that, that's where God has you. You know what I mean? We spend so so much time trying to look for the perfect job or the dream this or the dream house, and rather than just wherever God has you, let it be dedicated to Him. And if He wants you to you to move, He'll tell you. You'll know. I mean, don't worry so much about it. Um, we already talked about how finding the will of God is potentially even a pagan idea. And if you want to read that book, it's by Bruce Waltke, I think. I hope. Anyways. So whatever your profession is, um, dedicate it, dedicate your life to the Lord. Uh, It's the same regardless of whether you're a pastor or not. And the last thing, overcome greed in this way. We talked about, remember I asked over the past couple weeks, how do you overcome greed? How do you overcome greed? This right here. Give, give uh, persistently, give thankfully, and give much. That's how you overcome greed. By those steps, you will overcome greed. And the thing is, it's not just about money anymore. And we'll look at this more, um, not next week because that's the yam party, but the first week of November we'll look at this more. That it may start with money, but it stretches out way deeper into our very souls, and that's greed. And it's not just, uh, greed doesn't just revolve itself around money. It resol- revolves itself around um, the need for attention, that greediness that we get for, for being noticed for what we do. The greediness that we have for holding on to the things that's ours and what we worked for. The greediness that we have in spending our time how we see fit. The greediness that we have in taking, in taking um, our, our, uh, our relationships in life, our spouses, our kids, our, our, our parents, and taking them and thinking that we can just kind of hoard our things. And we're not willing to let them go. We're not willing to let God have his way in our lives and in our things, in our business, in our money, in our possessions, in anything that we have, in our attitudes. How many people? How many times have you known someone who, who's greedy on, on their bitterness? You know what I mean? Where they've been wronged by a church and they're greedy over that bitterness. They will not just let the bitterness go. They've literally taken a greed over it. It makes them feel good. They 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 lash out at other people. They you know what I mean? And, and, it, and it's a driving force for them. And the greed has literally taken over their heart. And you might think, oh well, they're just bitter. That's a problem. Their problem is greed. They haven't surrendered that to the Lord. So, I mean, they're trying to squander things for themselves. Trying to Grab all that they can and hold it close. Greed. So the more we look at greed, the more we see that every one of us has a problem with it. And the more we look at it, we also realize it has way more than just money in application. Um, so that's all for this week. Um, next week is the Halloween party. Party. Any questions? Any comments? Okay.